Hello everyone, my name is Ishika and today we are going to study about ecosystem. So before we start with ecosystem, I'd first like to write the subtopics of this very chapter. The first subtopic is ecosystem structure and function. The next subtopic is productivity. The third one is decomposition. The fourth one is energy flow. The fifth one is ecological pyramids. The sixth one is ecological succession. The seventh one is nutrient cycling. And the last one is ecological processes. Okay. So as you can read here, these are our eight <coughs> subtopics for this chapter. So first we are going to start with this subtopic which reads ecosystem, structure and function. Well, before we start uh, with the basic structure and function of the ecosystem, what do you guys understand by the term ecosystem? Right? So first we will define what is ecosystem. Ecosystem, it can be visualized as the functional unit of nature where living organisms interact with each other and with the surrounding physical environment okay so if we get to define ecosystem we would say that it can be visualized as the functional unit of nature where living organisms interact with each other and with the surrounding physical environment 
Here, the word living organisms can also be termed as a sorry can also be termed as biotic factors, and the physical environment can also be termed as the abiotic factors. So, you can also define ecosystem as it can be visualized as the functional unit of nature where biotic factors interact with each other and with the surrounding abiotic factors, right? So, this is what ecosystem means. Well, for the components of the ecosystem to function, there are few aspects that are to be remembered in mind. Well, those aspects are first is productivity second is <coughs> decomposition third is energy flow and the fourth is nutrient cycling if any of these aspects are not considered then an ideal ecosystem will not be possible to function so for the ecosystem to function these are the four aspects to be remembered to be considered right so let me give you an example of an ecosystem that you all know and we'll get to know how these components how these aspects become important for the ecosystem to function So these are the four aspects we are talking about, right? So I'll give you an example based on these four aspects only. Now let me take an example of a pond. Okay. So um, in a pond, basically there are there would be autotrophs that would be present right well in a pond the autotrophs would be the phytoplankton <coughs> and some algae in the pond the consumers would be the zooplankton right and the decomposers would be the bacteria and fungi right so in the pond, there are these autotrophs, which are the phytoplankton and some algae, which are usually free floating. These are usually free floating and, and are usually present and are usually present on the margins, on the margins of the pond. Okay. Whereas the consumers which in these case, in this case are the zooplankton are usually the bottom dwellers. Okay. And for the decomposers, we have the bacteria and fungi, which are usually abundant at the bottom. So these three are present in this pond, right? The autotrophs, the consumers and the decomposers. So how 
do these three make up an ecosystem in a pond well these autotrophs will take energy will take energy from the sun well this energy is nothing but the sunlight which is falling on the pond right so they will take energy from the sun to make to make food right so we, they will take energy from the sun to make food these consumers will feed will feed on these autotrophs right so you can say that these consumers are directly or indirectly dependent on these autotrophs and finally when and finally when the autotroph or the consumers are dead these are decomposed by the decomposers so this dead matter is decomposed by the decomposers so after the decomposers decomposes this matter nutrients come out and these are again absorbed by the autotrophs so nutrients that come out after decomposition are actually absorbed by the autotrophs so you can base and this process goes again and again okay it happens again and again so it's basically a cycle itself so here you can see that this cycle is throughout moving and it's not stopping and all these all these uh, components are hence forming an ecosystem in a pond so uh, so by by this example you can figure out why productivity decomposition energy flow and nutrient cycling become an important aspect of the ecosystem right